One day I'll take this out by the end of the game. And the swire, probably the spider shit. Mirror shard, no mirror shard. Agnorod staff. Well, that was definitely a huge waste of money. How you find most of your currency? I. Oh, that is a mirror shard. Oh, I would have enough to. Uh... Dude, it just looks like a random shard. It's not even highlighted on the filter. It's the filter's fault. The filter is do guard dog shit. Okay. Wait, why did I draw a vault map? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I should have probably bought the head on her, actually. <laughs> this is a terrible idea without being, using the head on her. I need to find light. I'm gonna turn loot off. Nah, no, Mike, I just uh, recently upgraded my computer. I'm pretty sure everything's gonna be fine. Hey, this build does pretty well without a head on her. What the fuck? How is this even possible? It's not fine. What is going on? Oh my god. Uh, hello? Wait, why is my HP not going up? How have I not have any head on the buffs yet? How am I still alive? I think the, uh, the Venom Jar just goes out and gives me life switch. Dude, the game is perfectly fine. Everything's A-OK. -okay. Everything is OK. Everything is just fine. There's nothing wrong. There's no problems at all. Dude, why is there... S I think it's the Zatosh. I mean, I have a lot of frames, so let's be real. It's the guy... I hate the fire guy, he just spawns the SRS and fucks up the game. Yeah, like, he's the main reason why the game's like this. Uh, I think uh, doing uh, Blight was a bad idea. The build is so fucking... Yeah. There was a clear machine, yeah. It makes lightning strike looks like a child, literally. Wait, what is this thing? At the scroll wheel, I mean, I'm not gonna pick up half of this shit. Wait, where's the light? Does he have a fracture mask? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Dude, fuck the fire guy. He's ruining my game's performance. Dude, what is going on? Dude, look at the flight. So I'm just gonna have a last stand here. 
Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today I'm very sad. I left a mirror shard in the ritual yesterday in a map. It was kind of an accident. I didn't even know what a mirror shard really looked like because it has actually never dropped for me in the past before. So this is me right now, pretty much crying. Not really knowing what to do anymore. Pretty much left like 11 to 12 exalts inside of a map. But yeah. It's, it is what it is, right? But it doesn't fucking matter because I actually discover one of the most fun builds in the game that I do think that a lot of people should try playing if price fixers don't like every, don't ruin the game, right? So price fixers are trying to price fix the items higher and it's pretty obvious. I saw some of the same people that were price fixing the lab jewel have a bunch of replica Alberon's Warpath bought up and repriced at a higher price. It is what it is. We can't let them get us down. We have to find a way to play the build regardless, but there's really no way to play the build without the boots. So in today's video, I'm pretty much going to showcase how exactly you can play the build, like some of the general overview of the build and what makes it work, what makes it tick real fast and how good it is, pros and cons pretty much. So you can get an idea if you want to save and invest for the build because you do probably need to save a baseline of 50 to 100 exalts to play it. But let me tell you, this build performs extremely, extremely well once you get past the initial hump of buying the boots and having the six link chest. And pretty much the boots is gatekeeping everything in this build. And there are budget options for almost every single other piece of gear besides the replica Alberon's Warpath. And there's really nothing you can do about it. You could play Lightning Strike Berserker until you want to swap, which is pretty much what I did at the start of the league. So let's leave all our sorrows and woes behind us with this horrible mirror shard and move on to the brighter future, which is Venom Gyre. So let's go see what are the pros and cons of this wonderful skill. So before we get started, I'm going to say why do we actually care so much about Venom Gyre now? It's because I had a feeling that GGG would change it. I had a feeling if I made a video that maybe they would eventually respond, but I have no idea. Maybe they already saw it and plan on saying it. But they literally posted in the bug report form thread after an hour the video was up and said that this was an unintentional change and we're working towards a fix. So the fix is going to be on the way and this makes it so that Venom Gyre has the potential to be one of the best skills of the league since its single target will massively increase and your quality of life will also massively increase. Now for people who didn't watch the last video, what name locking means is that when you hover over a mob, say like Gwen is your enemy, when you hover over the mob, your character will just go back and forth from whirling blades behind the mob, between the mob, instead of going off into the, off into nowhere. So the reason being why you want to go back and forth is because we have point blank, and this allows us to shotgun every single projectile that is released out into Gwen. and the more we're on top of the mob when we actually use our whirling blades, the more likely it is to shotgun all 30 of the blades onto the mob, and this is also helped out with our tornado. So all of the projectiles that hit tornado or Gwedin will pretty much all do damage. And all of it can shotgun all 30 wonderful blades, right? So this shotgunning effect actually makes it really good with Headhunter, as you'll see later on. Or you actually already saw it in the clips. And this skill scales really well with projectiles. So name locking fix. Super, super good for the skill's future, and I'm really looking forward to this change, and I hope it's coming in the next patch. So some of the Venom Jar pros, as I was mentioning, this is actually the only skill I have ever played that can clear a triple beyond 100% Delirium Juice map with no head on her at a decent speed. Uh, this build pretty much clears the triple beyond 100% Delirium maps as fast as some of my head on her builds which is kind of saying something. It also doesn't die that much doing it, purely because it has amazing sustained maps due to not needing the skill, due to not needing to still be attacking to get life back. What this means is that if you're playing the game right, and you're shooting out your projectile, and you're running around, all of these projectiles that fork out, that will still be out, will give you life gain on hit if it hits a mob. Also, when you're trying to run away from mobs, and you shoot out all of these projectiles, all of these projectiles can also leech back your life. So you're actually pretty immortal while the blades are coming out of you as long as you're not getting one shot. So it's a huge portion of our actual defense. And it actually feels really, really nice to play. I was really surprised that I was just not getting instantly killed by all of the beyond bosses that were spawning. 
The worst part of doing the 100% Deli Beyond stuff is definitely the Fire Beyond boss and all of the summoning Raging Spirits he summons that really lags the game out and kind of screws up Venom Gyre. Now, another thing is build has insane min-maxing and potential due to it being an attribute stacker. Because you're an attribute stacker, you can get a lot of min-maxing. A lot of it scales really well because you can get percent strength synth implicit rings. You can also get Emperor's Mastery jewels. You can get better jewels in general. You can get a bunch of stuff that helps you get a lot of stats. Eventually, if you get min-max gear fully, and this is not even min-max, right? You could get a rare amulet. You could also get strength on this suffix of the helmet. You can get a lot of different stuff to help you out, mostly in the tree. You can get better jewels and everything. And the min-maxing potential is insane, and I knew a lot of people like min-maxing builds. And this build really has a really, really high ceiling due to it being an attribute stacker, just like in stacker, right? So you can see here, this is actually the old Spectral Throw MTX that came out, which is the banana Spectral Throw, as everyone loves it. So you can see here, you throw out the blades, and it's actually coming back to you. So what I do hope that happens with Venom Jar is that GGG sees that this skill is universally loved and that they make an MTX for the skill similar to Spectral Throw. I'm pretty sure that this MTX is probably one of the most bought MTXs of all time in Path of Exile. But now let's go over to the cause of an Gyre. So this is pretty much me pointing at the cause, telling you what exactly you can't do with the skill and you'll see there's a big pile of money right there. So you cannot start playing Venom Gyre from the very start because it is a strength stacking variant. This does mean that you'll probably have to play a Lightning Strike Berserker, like I say, or another Marauder build. Now, a lot of people have tried out different Ascendancies, but everyone always comes back to my stream and tells me that Berserker seems to attack a lot faster and it seems to do infinite damage compared to Ascendant and Deadeye. And there is the extremely high upfront investment due to needing the Replica Albron's Warpath boots for the build to function. Now, for people who don't know what the Replica Albron's Warpath is, let's go look at it. POE Ninja Replica Albron's Warpath. So basically, you can see here, Replica Albron's Warpath are a pair of boots that give you percent strength, and most importantly, it gives you 1 to 80 chaos damage per 80 strength. So this is where all of our flat chaos damage is going to be coming from. So it is actually very, very important to be able to afford these boots because if you don't have these boots, you're going to be doing no chaos damage at all. But this is a hit-based chaos build, right? So it can also be dangerous to use Whirling Blades to shoot out blades if you're not used to boss mechanics. And the skill kind of looks ugly if you don't like the color green. So like I said before, if you're doing bosses, you want a Whirling Blades on top of it. But the problem with this is... You don't really know if you don't really know what the boss is going to be doing, or if the boss has a lot of degen puddles like Maven or Cyrus beams, then it can be very dangerous to actually do whirling blades on top of it. But I have already killed all of the bosses, and I did the fear with Venom Gyre with no name locking, so it should be fine. Skill is also really really green, and it's kind of like the EK Knives MTX. So now let's see what the expensive items are actually needed for the build. So replica Albert's Warpath number one item is currently 40x, but it is kind of being price fixed. You could use a strength stacking rare helmet, but you could also use crown of eyes for half damage. The strength stacking rare helmet is actually pretty expensive. It is this one right here. So this helmet is crit chance per 10 strength, accuracy rating equal to your strength, and then nearby enemies have negative 12 chaos res. But you could definitely use a crown of eyes. Crown of eyes is around half damage though. Forbidden Flame and Flesh with Undeniable Juggernaut nodes are very, very expensive. I did buy them for, I think, 20x for the whole set. But some people have told me that the jewels are up to 40x each now. This is 25% more damage, but you do lose two jewel sockets. And jewel sockets are pretty big on a strength stacker. Jewel socket can be up to like 12% or 13% strength. So it's not like the biggest deal in the world if you don't have these Forbidden Flame and Flesh jewels. So you can see here, I'm using this jewel right here. And what this jewel does is it gives you accuracy rating per 150 accuracy rating and it gives you an accuracy rating equal to twice your strength, right? So with this helmet that gives you accuracy rating equal to strength and then it also stacks with this thing, we're actually able to get an insane amount of attack speed because of all this accuracy rating. And I think it actually brings up close to like 17 to 20 attacks per second. 
Now you do need to six link Iron Fortress. A lot of people ask me why you need the Iron Fortress is that it actually gives you percent damage based on your 10 strength. So it applies the strength's damage bonus there. Or it gives you 3% instead of 2%. And it also gives you max block, right? So it gives you 1% chance to block attack damage for 50 strength. So if you have around somewhere in the vicinity of like 2200 strength, you will have 75% block. The bad part about the chest is it actually makes your spell damage block unlucky. So you can see here we have 75 72% chance to block. So pretty much capped out block. Now you also might need a claw with fracture attack speed, but you could use a budget one by spamming spell damage essences. So this is gonna be pretty similar to the Trinity claw or elemental claw that people use. So this is pretty much crafted with fractured attack speed, but you spam woe essences instead of a fire essence. And the thing about this claw is it's actually a lot easier to craft because you can use Aug Chaos to get the, what's it called, the T1 Chaos roll, as it's the only uh, tier of the roll. So this claw is actually a lot easier to craft than an elemental claw, and you can make this with just spamming woe essences. You don't need to use a fracture attack speed base. Now, Divergent Venom Gyre is another expensive item for the build that was originally like one exalt, but I did see it go up to two exalts, or I mean 10 exalts at one point. And this gem is pretty much needed because it gives you chain, so you can see here, Chains plus one times at 20% quality actually gives you one chain, right? So this is a pretty, pretty big item. And you can see here, this is the price of Divergent Venom Gyre. And it goes up a lot. So you can see here, a lot of the items that we need are also found in Heist. And not many people run blueprints in Heist currently. So it remains to be seen what will happen to the build. But all of the other items are not really that expensive. Eyes of the Great Wolf, you can get a really cheap one, or you can use Astramentis. This is like six exalts or so. This helmet, you can use Crown of Eyes, which is pretty much like one exalt or less, even with the enchant. Pretty sure Red Blade Banner is, let's see what Red Blade Banner is, like a 25, 30 chaos item. These rings are like one exalt each. You can get a Synth Belt with percent strength for like, I think I bought mine for like one exalt. And then this is pretty much just a life attacks beast suppression and strength item that's probably around like one exalt or so that I bought. And these flasks, Bottle Faith is around seven exalts, but you don't need Bottle Faith. Main things you need are Dying Sun and Despair Flask if you don't have what's it called, Despair on your ring. And then these are pretty much just Granite Flask, so Utility Flasks. So you see here, you can see we have Lethal Pride. These clusters kind of get a little bit expensive, but you don't need to get a three notable cluster, you just waste a point. So you can see here, and I will be releasing the shopping cart for everyone. So here you can see for some clusters, large clusters. So the main thing on the cluster is you need Phantom Blade. You can see here there's like 30 Chaos clusters. You will just use two notables and you spend an extra travel point. But not sure how cheap these will be in the long run. This build gets super, super popular. But Megalomaniac, you can use a regular Phantom Blade's Megalomaniac for extra projectile if you want. And then these jewels here, Inertia are all like one chaos, unless you have a really good corruption, but you don't really need it. So split personality with strength and dex are both, I think this one is 20, 25, 30 chaos. So you can see here, there's not really any crazy, crazy expensive items on this build. Lethal Pride, you can just divide it like 15 chaos. And yeah, everything, Watcher's Eye, I use the purity of elements. So you can see this is like four exalts. You don't need to spell suppression. Spell suppression roll doesn't even exist currently. So four to five X watchers are right. So nothing on this tree is that expensive besides the forbidden flesh and flame jewels. So outside of these expensive items, not really anything that stands out. And for these expensive items, you definitely don't need the helmet. You definitely don't need the undeniable jewels. And you definitely don't need to use a fracture claw for starting off. So just make sure you can get the boots and you'll be good to go. So what are the build defenses? You have 100% spell suppression, 77 to 78% max res, 60% evasion because we're running grace currently, 75% block and 30k armor roughly, maybe less. So the biggest weakness is elemental damage from hits. Anytime you have a character like this, it's generally pretty tanky, but the problem is that 78 res is kind of lowish in terms of like in today's world with melting of flesh and everything. But it's not too bad and our life pool is like 5.4k which should be good enough but if you're doing simulacrums the 
main thing you'll die to is probably crits from LA damage from like melee hits. So you want to make sure if you're trying to farm Simulacrum and you don't want to die, you want to get crit reduction. You can get that on Determination Watcher's Eye or you can get that on Red Blade Banner Implicit Corruption. So let's see what the conclusions we have for Venom Gyre. Overall, this build is a clear speed powerhouse. I hope the footage at the start really showcases how good the actual clear of this build is. I know I say Lightning Strike is a really amazing skill, and it really is, but Venom Gyre completely blows it out of the water in terms of map clear. Venom Gyre is pretty much a range clear spell with built-in chain, and it doesn't have the less damage modifier because you don't need to use LMP or GMP. And it is a skill that is able to be used for both clear and single target without any gem swaps, which is a huge, huge deal. Single target will be 100 times better both in quality of life and damage after the name locking fix. So hopefully that comes through super soon. You cannot league start this and it has a high upfront cost. A lot of people ask me, can I league start this? Can I play this build right away? And the answer is no. You could probably play the Trinity variant pretty early on. But you definitely cannot play the Shrave Stack and Chaos variant. And most importantly, remember to check for Mirror Shards and Ritual. You don't want to end up like me, missing out on Mirror Shard and seeing chat laugh at them and telling them that they're a failure in life. But it is what it is. It gets better. And there's definitely better days ahead. Maybe there's going to be a Mirror in the Ritual next time that I leave behind. But we'll see. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to join the Discord if you have any questions. And I'll be sure to try to answer it. And I hope you find more mirrors, exalts, and mage bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye.